Imagine a 14-year-old girl testifying while a sexual predator just sits feet away listening to every word she says. In 1984, I was that girl. I was there to protect my two step-siblings who I called the littles. I was there to tell my story about how this horrific abuser sexually abused me from the time I was three years old until I was 11. What's unfortunate about this is we didn't have to ever show up that day if a few things just would have happened in our past. First, I wasn't the only one testifying that day. His sister had kept a secret for 35 years. She finally told her secret that day that he had been sexually abusing her all through adolescence. Just imagine if she was able to just tell one person within that 35 years. Second, when I was three years old and the abuse started, I actually told my mom. Although she tried to get support, everyone told her she was crazy. So she stopped looking. And she never asked me about it again. Just imagine if just one person would have been curious if it's possible that I was telling the truth. And finally, when I was 11 years old and this man and my mother got a divorce, if I only had the teachings of organizations such as the UK charity NSPCC, who teach safe touching with family and friends and not just stranger danger. Over 93% of children are actually abused by someone they know. This picture still makes me very sad today. It's a picture of me at two years old and again at four years old. They say sexual abuse actually disconnects your soul. When I look into these two pictures, I can actually see it in my eyes. I'm here today, 38 years later, because I want to stand up for those who have not found the courage or are unable to tell their story or their secrets yet. I'm also here to give hope and show that there is a way to recover from sexual abuse and other traumas. So I took the stand when I was 14 years old, but it was the last time I stood up for myself for another 25 years. I went into life mode. I got married. I had children, I had a successful career. My husband and I started a business. We had lots of friends and we traveled. I was a fun-loving, high-functioning, extroverted workaholic. Many people would have never guessed that I had any issues as a child, including me. It didn't show up like a lot of mental health concerns might. But at some point late into my life, my coping strategies quit working. I was no longer able to numb enough to feel good. I couldn't get enough validation. And this, later on in my marriage, brought it crashing down. This devastated my family. And what frustrated me is I was back to being that little girl in those pictures where my abuser had all the power over me. But the difference was I was not a little girl. I was an adult. And it was my family and my children that were being affected. I knew I needed help. It was a marriage counselor who had the courage to say to me, I needed to get support for my childhood traumas. They weren't gonna go away on my own and I wasn't gonna be able to just live through them all. As we started divorce proceedings, I checked myself into a 30-day residential intensive program. Now many people go into a residential program for addictions, maybe suicide ideation, or a mental health condition that's been diagnosed. For me, I went in and I didn't even take a sleeping pill, but I knew I was in the right place. I had to ensure that the intergenerational trauma coming up from my life did not affect the rest of my family. I needed to stop the cycle. Going to an intensive program for 30 days is getting about 300 hours of support every day for about 10 hours, I'm working on myself. It's mind, body, and spirit focused, and it's a personal plan for me. What I learned during that time is I had suffered from post-traumatic stress from my abuse. I also carried so much shame and guilt from not being able to say something sooner and protecting the littles. Next, I also learned that as a child, I wasn't protected, and I had been abandoned so many times that I spent most of my life trying to control every outcome. 
which then led me to a very stressful life. I was often a topic of discussion with the clinical team. They could not understand how I didn't have addictions, mental health concerns, health concerns, physical health concerns, and I didn't even smoke cigarettes. And the reason why is because they think I just was born with a resilience chip. I have to agree. But also, I think what happened is when I was little and had the abuse going on, I had one person in my life who was a constant who just poured her love into me, and that was my grandmother. Evidence suggests that you can get through adverse childhood experiences if you just have one loving person in your life. Second is forgiveness. I forgave my abuser early on. I know that is not something that is a popular answer. A lot of people won't be able to understand. I forgave him for me, not for him. In fact, I'm pretty sure he does not even know about that. I could not live with hatred in my heart, and I knew that it would wreck my life. Number three is I did stand up for myself when I was 14, and I stood up for my step-siblings, the littles. Finally, support. Since the time I was five years old, I unconsciously started building a support group around me. Today, I have 18 women who I call my sisters of choice. They know all my scars, they're there for my joys and my sorrows, and they help me celebrate life every day. I know I would not be where I am today without those women. When I moved to Northern Ireland just three years ago, I was very disappointed to realize that there was no place for people who are suffering from trauma to go, which surprises me. In a place where historical trauma just looms over the community, this is unacceptable. The NHS, National Health Service, gives six hours a year to get counseling. It's just not enough. Evidence suggests we need 10 to 20 hours just to feel safe enough to talk to a counselor. Also, if you've been sexually abused, the waiting list is over 1,000 people just to get seen. The NHS has also studied that the help of people with lived experience to be able to talk to and provide support groups is important. My own dissertation study on trauma says the same. The 2021 mental health strategy is incorporating those with lived experience into helping others heal. But we still need to do more work. It is clear that trauma victims need voice and choice. They need a voice to say what they need and when they need it, and they need choices, such as different modalities to choose from, different support programs, and different times when they can go get that support. Make no mistake, sexual abuse is our own global pandemic. It is so distinct across the world that the numbers are all over the board. But to give you an example, in the States, one out of four girls and one out of six boys is said to be sexually abused. And every nine minutes, another child is being reported about sexual abuse. In the UK, the numbers are one in 20. However, there's been a lot of media attention lately stating that they feel that that is quite understated. Recently, an Ireland report came out stating that the average age of someone actually telling about their abuse is 34 years old and it's historical trauma that had happened 20 years prior. If we continue to keep the secrets, not only does the cycle of abuse keep going, but those who are affected are unable to heal. Today, I am standing up again for one of the littles. She died by suicide five years ago. Just imagine if she had the opportunity to have a voice and a choice to heal the way she needed. Today, I'm also sharing because I believe you can heal and we can reconnect the soul. My own story shows that. Finally, now that I've finished my education and just recently graduated from Ulster University, I want to take my education and combine it with my own business experience, my lived experience, not just my trauma, but definitely my healing, and combine it all to start an organization here in Northern Ireland where others can come and get support for trauma, a place that does help heal the mind, the body, and the spirit when you're ready. Just imagine if we, as a community, can all heal from our traumas.